Hey everybody, welcome back to my sewing channel. Today I thought that I would do a quick video on how I use my Branding Iron Unlimited Branding Iron to brand all of my pieces. Um, so I used to use these little tags that I got from All This Wood on Etsy. Everybody always asks me about them, I'll link them below. Um, and I love these tags, however I wanted I don't know, I thought that the branding iron looked really cool and just added like sophistication. So I ordered one um, and now I brand all of my wallets and smaller items with the brand. And you can kind of see it creates like a, a subtle imprint, which I really love and it's not raised. And if I forget to do it before I um, make the wallet, I can add it at the end, which I'm terrified to do. I've only had to do it a couple times if I forget and I don't know. I still have a lot to learn using the branding iron. I'm not a pro by any means, but I just thought that I would, you know, tell you what I've learned. Uh, don't let your cats near it because it's very hot. It's very hot right now because I just used it in the video, but this is what it looks like. It's kind of heavy. It's definitely top heavy, um, but it has a detachable head and you can get multiple um, brands for it if you prefer. And I want to say that I paid somewhere in the neighborhood of $250, including shipping for it, but that's because it's all priced on the size of the head that you get. And I got the temperature, ugh, this guy, I got the temperature control box. Um, you don't have to use the control box, but if you just plug it into the wall, then there's no way to control how hot the actual iron gets. So it is highly suggested to get this. They kind of force you to a little bit, um, but I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, I go over what setting I have it at right now and just kind of um, different things that I've seen along the way. So I cover all of that. Um, and yeah, so that's really it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll do what I can to answer them and uh, enjoy. So a quick run through of my iron. Um, I've had it on, it's been heating up for a couple hours, so I'm not gonna touch it because it's very, very hot. But this is what it looks like. And it is roughly 2.25 inches wide along the bottom by one and a half tall. And then if you see, it is about a half an inch deep, the actual brand, the cutting of my um, logo goes in about a half an inch. And so this head is removable. You can twist it off and if you wanted to do use this iron with another plate, you can. So that's really cool. Um, it has this on and off switch here. And you can hear it when it's on. It makes that buzzing noise. But like I said, I've had it on for the last couple hours, so it is good to go. This is the iron control box. I have mine set at just under six, and I've been tweaking this. It depends on the color of the cork that you're branding. Um, sometimes it shows up, some examples, but sometimes it'll kind of burn the cork. So you can see on this example, if you can, let's see. So on this example, it's really, it's dark black, and on the S and the A and the R, you can kind of see through it because I held it down for too long push too hard but I still use this because when it's laid up against another color of cork you can't even tell so I think it actually looks kind of cool but so this was obviously hotter or I held it on longer or something to that of that nature on these flat color corks it kind of makes just an imprint which I really love it's it's a lot more subtle than the burning here it is on mint, and so it kind of went through, it started to burn down here on the SEW, but you can see the narwhal is just imprinted, and I think it's really cool. Um, here's one on the olive. And then, sometimes, this is also what I'm working on, but on half of it, like over here, I got it super deep, and it's, it's almost all the way through the cork, but on this side, I didn't. So this side's more of an imprint, and this side, goes all the way through so I'm still working out my pressure and how I apply pressure because obviously I'm not a pro all right so those are some examples and then the way that I set it up is the iron comes with this little silver stand and then I put it on a porcelain plate because the stand will it'll the heat will go through the heat will travel 
So I keep it on this porcelain plate and then when I'm stamping or branding rather, I use a wooden cutting board. And so because I've had it on this plate all morning, the plate is a little bit warm. So whenever you're moving it or wherever you place it, be careful because if you place it on your mat, it can cause it to warp. So be, keep that in mind. So normally what I do is I just move it off my mat. Move my mat over. And then I just have it on my plastic table because I don't really care. So you can see my board. You can see where I've just laid it down, the iron down. And I've just kind of played with it on the wood. And this is where it goes through the cork. That's what all of those imprints are. But yeah, those that's just for me laying it down on the wood. And then that's me trying to imprint on the wood. So I keep the wood on here. And then what I do is whatever pieces of cork I want to brand, I cut and I'll cut, usually I'll cut out a bunch at one time and just brand a batch um, just so that way, because it does take this a while to, to heat up. And so I just like heat it up, turn it on, like turn it on this morning, left, and then now I'm ready to go. So I cut out all my cork and now I'm just going to brand a bunch of stuff. And I always do test branding first. So if you have like scraps of cork, that's what this is good for. But so... You just want to hold it on the handle and then straight up and down, put it on and apply pressure. And I kind of rock it back and forth because I have lots of little nooks and crannies in my logo. And so, oh, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it because I'm at an angle to you guys, but. Um, so this is pretty good. It's really hot because it's been on so long. So it actually kind of went through the cork here. You can see that you can see through it. So I will hold it for less time and probably not push as hard. I'm going to grab another scrap. Ooh, hot. Okay, so... This one, you can tell that I was leaning really far back on it because the sonar is super deep, but the narwhal itself is not. So, this is why we practice. It's usually pretty far between times when I'm using this, because like I said, I do, I have a bunch already made over here. So anytime I fire up the brand, I just brand a bunch of stuff. So I'm just gonna practice. Standing up, I find helps a little bit because then you can get better leverage on it. Okay, so that was good. So I counted to a quick three, and this cork was too small, so it didn't get my whole brand, but let's see, I don't know if you can see it, but this is nice. It created more of just the imprint. All right, so I'm going to start on my cork, and so the way that I center it is I use my clear ruler, and I, um, so this is a bifold pocket wallet, so I just line it up on either edge, and then I go about three-eighths of an inch up. And then I know I just center it. So I kind of just sit the iron on the edge of my ruler here and seat it forward. And then I pull the, the ruler out so that it doesn't melt it. There are quite a few little divots in here, um, but they're superficial. So it's not, it doesn't affect the ruler at all. See, I don't know if it'll. I can never tell what you can see because of the angles when I'm filming. I... Ah, there you go. So you can see it made kind of an imprint. And that is exactly what I'm going for. And so if you do leave it on for too long, it will pull the cork in and it'll kind of warp it. This one is just a little bit warped, but when you're sewing it, it'll take its shape back nicely. All right, so now I'm just going to go down every piece that I have in my pile here. I'm going to turn it on again because it, it seems to be cooling off just a little bit.
if you're rocking it back and forth and all around, you need to be really careful. I have quite a few that I have done that where I'm moving it, but the cork shifts and then the whole um, piece is ruined because the way that it imprints it, it's uh, it just moves all around and so it just doesn't look nice. Let's do that one upside down. All right, so now this is going to be a tall wallet pocket. And so I'm just gonna measure over three because that's how wide this will end up being after it's done. I'm still too scared to brand once the pieces are completed because if it ruins it, then I'm up the river. And so this will be folded like that. But see, it just creates like a really subtle branding, which I love. If you want it to burn it, you easily can hike the, um, the temperature up. When I first got it, I think I started at like six or seven because it just seemed like it took forever for it to heat up when it was low. Um, and I know that some people still, they use it at a much lower temperature than mine. But so mine's been heating up for hours and it's still not burning the cork. And I'm holding it and pushing, oh, I'm, I'm really pushing down on it. This is going to be the back of a checkbook holder. See, so just nice and subtle i love the way that looks now the natural is the one that if it's super high temperature it will just burn it just like it looks on my on the wood so yeah i prefer this kind of pressed look over the the burnt but sometimes the burnt does look good on certain pieces generally speaking as long as it's a solid imprint whether it's burnt or just stamped i'll, I'll use it One more little pocket here. All right. All right, guys, so I hope that you enjoyed that quick tutorial about how I use my branding iron to brand the cork. Uh, bless you to my doggy Ruka. Um, let me know if you have any questions, comments, uh, be sure to hit like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And uh, because I was branding checkbooks, I figured I would link the video somewhere over here in the box. That is a free tutorial on how to make a checkbook with a divider cover, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, guys.